Ashes now. Giselle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to another episode of the Panther Soccer Podcast. We are on episode 13, the Giselle Loza episode. Um, Giselle is one of our many freshmen this year. Um, she plays midfield primarily, and she's been getting some pretty consistent minutes off the bench. Yeah, no, she's just very good on the ball. She's not afraid. I mean, she makes really good passes as well, and... Uh, yeah, no, against St. Ambrose, I really thought that she was... What happened? God. <laughs> Sus. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just think she's really good on the ball, and uh, yeah, just a good player. Yeah, definitely good. Probably, she's really close to scoring a couple times. I was just going to say uh, that. Our past yeah. game, a couple off the post, I think. And some really well-placed shots. Um, yeah, hopefully she gets a goal soon because I think she's played enough to, I could say she's earned one. Just doesn't have it yet. She will earn her first goal soon. Omaha, man. Sunday. It's going to happen. I can feel it. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Bro, there's so many players that we're like hyping up to try and get them to score. That's just, it's just fun at this point. Like Marissa yeah. Gross comes to mind. Like, like against St. Ambrose yesterday, yeah, yesterday, two days ago, whatever you want to call it. Um, like, towards the end of the game, like, I was like, I was literally yelling, pass it to Marissa, pass it to Marissa, because I want to see Marissa score so badly. Yeah, it seems like she's been so close. I think she's, she passes first before she looks for a shot, I think. Yeah. Which is nice. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. selfish, which is good. Yeah. Probably for the best. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's yeah. doing good. Hopefully she can get a goal. Alright, well... I guess we'll get into that, yeah. but... We've, uh, since, we've since played two games since last time we did a recap. We have Western Illinois and St. Ambrose. So, the Western Illinois game. Um, Thursday, I believe, at 8.30 kickoff? 8 p.m. kickoff. Bro, that was a hard game to travel to. I, I understand why the players thought we were crazy for making that trip. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, no... Um, in a future episode of the podcast, Denise mentions that you were talking to her at lunch or something, and and you know you made it a surprise that to show up and and her and all the other freshmen's reaction to us making the trip, they're like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. They they didn't mention this to us at all. Like, are they crazy? Like they loved us ha being there and yeah. stuff like that, and yeah. just sitting behind. That was so. That was a really cool thing about Western Illinois sitting behind the bench because <laughs> like we got like you know. See what, I don't know, see what their interactions are on the bench yeah. and like their chirps towards the other team and stuff like that. It was, it was fun. Yeah. I think I ate lunch with, with four of them that that day around noon. They were leaving at like 1.50 or something like that. I don't know. But I didn't mention it at all. We talked a bit about the game that evening, of course. I was like, oh, good luck. Like, you know. It sucks that we won't be there. <laughs> I never said we wouldn't be there, but... <laughs> right, exactly. If they would have asked, like, maybe would have pulled something. I, I definitely didn't didn't allude to them. I probably That's probably their first experience being like, oh, these guys are, like, actually serious. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. If they hadn't picked up on that already from, you know... The this, podcast, the documentary. And us being at all the games. <laughs> all the merch we buy. Speaking of which, we still haven't gotten our shirts yet. As of... Was it the 30th today? Yeah, something like that. Did you receive a package or get an email saying you received a package today? I have a package. I believe it is a music textbook. <laughs> I'm going to go find out after this. There's a chance. Well, I just hope we get it before Saturday. Anyways, yeah. Western Illinois, you talk about it. I, I don't, I don't want to yeah. talk about that game. So, so first off, I guess we should preface this. Uh, final score zero zero. We take our first draw of the year. Uh, nothing too crazy this game. Um, we had six shots on goal. Um, nine shots total. Seven shots came in the second half. So a very slow start for both teams. Two shots from us and three from Western Illinois. Western Illinois only finished with one shot on goal. So there was it was a really uneventful game. I think each team maybe had one shot that looked close, but really nothing crazy. Yeah. And 
we finished down the game. You and I, we dominated the second half. Um, possessions probably through the roof. And the last five minutes or so especially, we we had some very, very close calls. I think one of the defenders had like an on-the-line clearance. Yeah. As like we were about to score. Yeah. Uh, close calls, so. <sighs> yeah. I don't know what to say, honestly. It was... It was, like you said, pretty uneventful, but I don't know. I was very impressed with Isabel, the uh, goalkeeper for Western Illinois. I felt like she just contained herself really well. Like, I know the, you know, playing goalkeeper on turf is probably the hardest thing you can do as a soccer player because you don't know, like, the bounces are way different on turf than on regular grass. And I felt like she just contained herself very well and... No, I was very impressed with the Western Illinois goalkeeper. Well, that's enough to talk about Western Illinois because we don't support them. Yeah, we don't. Honestly, though, like I was very impressed with the the back four. They played all ninety minutes. None of them were subbed off. I don't know if that is a good thing. I don't know. I mean, it shows that I don't know. They're good enough to play the whole. I think they're good enough as like they're solid. I don't know if we have a crazy amount of depth in our defense. But, hey, if our starters are going to be this good and are capable of playing 90, then I, I don't really have any concerns moving into conference play here in a couple weeks. Right, exactly. Not only that, but that was our, what, fourth game in eight days? Like, those players yes, were yes. dogged. And I am... Not to mention the, the extreme heat for almost all of those games. Yeah, that's for sure. I don't know. Anything else about this game? Nothing too crazy. Um... We've seen a lot of freshmen off the bench this year, which is really nice. Um, good to get them playing time. So I'm glad that um, not all the freshmen are being like forgotten as far as playing time goes. Yeah, I mean we had what five different freshmen play. Um, I don't think any of them started besides Olivia Ball, but yeah. So you know you got Denise, Marissa getting good minutes, Giselle. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's that's another thing we can talk about, and maybe as we transition to the St. Ambrose game, our starting eleven, we started to see that even out a bit. So I think that might kind of be our final starting eleven lineup is what's been starting. So let's I'll just run through the names real quick. <laughs> so we had well, obviously Caitlin Star, Denise, Caroline, Lauren, Olivia Canepley, Olivia Bull, Ashley Harrington, Allison. I can't pronounce your last name. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I know you as Whitaker. I don't know how to pronounce your new last name. So if you have Alistairi, Maddie Solaric, and Maddie Isis. So in that starting line, starting 11, we had two different freshmen, which was really cool to see. Rotate uh, Jaylee in for Denise. Like, I think they're about equal on skill level. So I don't, I don't mind that change. Yeah. But I think, yeah, maybe besides Denise and, and Jaylee, I think almost everyone in that lineup has been starting the past few games. So I think that's going to be our... So our lineup uh, heading to conference play unless something changes. I don't know. Macy Smith at forward. The go. We'll get into that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, well, we can talk about it in between. Actually, yeah, that's so. smart. How about that? Player of the week for the yeah. Missouri Valley Conference, Macy Smith coming off the bench against Southern Utah to get two goals, one of them being the game winner, to come back from two goals down and Macy Smith, honestly, is the most, I don't know how to word it, but most exciting player to watch on the UNI soccer team right now. Yeah. Her goal contributions are way up there. She, um, she up to three now? I think she had four contributions. Okay, she yeah. scored again for St. Ambrose, um, which we'll get into. But, yeah, she's extremely promising uh, hustles. Um, was really not on the field for too long for St. Ambrose, uh, but got a goal. You could tell. I think you could tell when she stepped on the field, like, she's excited, fiery, ready to go. Uh, score. She's got a reputation now for the <laughs> Offensive Player of the Week for Missouri Valley Conference. So. Kind of a big deal. That's a nice box to check in our regular season before we start conference play. Of like, hey, you and I, we're the real deal. Oh, I guess we can continue yeah. off that. We're also still undefeated. Yep. Uh, we beat St. Ambrose three uh, nil at a weekday game. St. Ambrose ended up being a lot better than I expected because, like NAIA, you don't really know what to expect. Like, and our what we thought the standard was to compare other NAIA teams to was the Turbo, and like the Turbo, they were 
not good. Nine nothing. Uh, they weren't good. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I'm assuming St. Ambrose is probably better than that. They just barely lost to the number two team in NAIA. So I honestly projected it to be about 5 6 nil. It ended up being 3 nil. And honestly, I was pretty impressed with St. Ambrose. I really do think they're they're not a bad team. Like I feel like the game was a little closer than 3 nil, But honestly, I think it was a great test for us. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I think the key to us... Uh, we dominated possession. Oh, 100%. Pretty well, much, barring a maybe 10 minute stretch in the first half. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Um, the, the second half was all you and I for the most part. So, our goals, we can run down. So, just four minutes in, a little over four minutes in, Olivia Knuffley scores. This is by Warren. A beautiful cross. Um, next goal, it's quiet for the rest of the first half. Uh, yeah, that kind goal, of shocked me a bit. I thought we were going to get a second one, but. Yeah. So next goal is Maddie Eastus in the 56th minute. Makes it 2-0. Gives us a nice little security goal, as I like to call it. And then Macy Smith, our Good offensive goal. player of the week, steps onto the field, uh, scores just a few minutes later. Uh, and then in the 77th minute to make it 3-0. And that it stayed that way until the final. This is history. I don't know. I was, um, I don't know. Some of the key players, though, throughout the game, I, I really enjoyed seeing Mackenzie Orr just, I don't know, I, I don't know, I, I felt like so far Mackenzie Orr played her best game against St. Ambrose. I don't remember her making any, like, notable mistakes, and, like, when she did have the ball, she made some pretty key passes, some really smart decisions. I don't know, I really enjoyed seeing Mackenzie Orr get some minutes. Uh, Riley Chesna, uh, player of the match, uh, as chosen by us, <laughs> but, um, no, Riley Chesna really stood out. I... She had a solid 59 minutes in, and I don't know, her passes were really good. Her yeah. three balls were, oh, she played really well. I was impressed. Yeah. Anything else to add, I guess? Me, I think um, I, I can rehash comments from our to our starters from previous weeks. I think they all played good. A couple people that we usually don't mention that I think stood out. First off, uh, we subbed our keepers at half, so Kennedy... I uh, got in the second half. Wasn't really challenged, to be honest with you, but hey, minutes are minutes. Yeah, I mean, she got two saves. So. Yeah. And then I think Camille playing 20 minutes down the stretch. She's really close a couple times. I think maybe a little, like, freezes up with the ball just a little bit. Um, but there's definitely some, some promise there, and I, I just think our, our forwards are rather deep. Um, we <laughs> Brady's counting them, but we subbed off a whole lot of people, so we're just kind of displaying our deep bench, and I think that's going to be a real asset to us uh, headed into the conference play. Um, you know, obviously we don't want this, but we could tank an injury maybe too. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen, but I think we have a nice depth yeah. uh, to our team this year. Yeah, we had 24 different players uh, yeah. step on the field. So. Yeah. I think uh, one more thing here. Um, so you and I finished the, the game with, That's with, pretty cool. with 40 shots, uh, not on goal. Oh, jeez, imagine if it was on goal. I don't think that's right. I'm going to be honest here. So, 40? There's, I don't know how to be a typo, though, because it wasn't four. Well, ah, yeah. Uh, okay. So we had 40 shots, uh, 14 on goal. So a busy day for the keeper. Honestly, did... Decent. I know lots of them were kind of straight to her, to be honest with you. Yeah. Our good, well-placed shots are just outside, so that's where a lot of those uh, off-target uh, misses come from. But I think that's probably the most shots I've seen in one of our games. And there were some, like, I know Jay Lee had one that was really close. Yeah. Ashley was, was shooting, like, she's at the shooting range uh, with uh, six shots, I believe. Uh, That's so funny. Only only one on goal, but you could definitely tell she, Ashley she wants uh, it. Harrington wants wants the goal. Um, hope she could get one. Maybe Eastus with a seventy five percent on on target percentage in the game. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's like I don't know. I, I guess another player of the match because uh, we always choose two or more yeah. or one sometimes depending yeah. on the game. But yeah, no, Eustis looked really good as well. Um, I'm really glad that she's recovered very well from her injury last year because most of last year she was injured for I don't even know how long. Um, her first game back was like the Indiana State game and she was off to a rough, that was the away game, right? Yeah, she yeah. really didn't play too well. Yeah, it was off to a slow start. 
And yeah, now she's a regular starter. Like I can't think of the last time she hasn't started the game. And yeah, no, it's really good to see Maddie Eastis because like I knew, like just from the way she talked, like I knew there's a lot of potential in her. And yeah, no, so it sucked that she couldn't really play much last year. And when she did, like it was just, mm, yeah, it was an off day. Let's go with that. No, but she's she's a star on the team. Like honestly. Yeah, I think something that kind of alluded alluded to her having a good season. I think maybe both of us saw it, but she's posting a lot of stuff on social media over the oh summer. Gosh, of so her much training. Of her in training and maybe even a few games, I'm not sure. But she looked really good, and so I that was ringing alarm bells for me at the start of the season. I'm like, well, Maddie Eastis looks freaking terrifying out there oh, uh, through the summer, so I'm, I'm glad that she used her summer uh, to get back into form, and it's really paid off here. No, that, I think that's the most important key to our success right now is that a lot of the players were playing summer ball. Like, I mean, we even went to one of the games uh, when uh, Jaylee yeah. was playing for Sunflower State, and, like, she played, what, 75 minutes? Like, yeah. like it's not that they were playing on summer league teams and not playing. They're getting reasonable amount of playing times. Like, I know Mackenzie Hood played on some team down there in the Kansas City area and was starting on a regular basis, or Mackenzie Orr was playing on a team, I believe, was starting on a regular basis. Uh, Caroline Hazen was the defender. She was in the uh, the all conference team for whatever conference she was playing in. Mm. Uh, yeah, no. So that's had a lot to do with our success this year. And yeah, no. And that's another reason why I think Kenny uh, Buttonbach improved so much was she was the starting goalkeeper yeah. for the Iowa Raptors. Raptors. Yeah, and Camille played on that team as well. Yep. I believe. Yes, she did. I think. Yeah, that's, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. You and I, after the St. Ambrose game, now uh, four wins, zero losses, one draw. Zero losses. That's the most important one. Yeah, I don't know if I would have quite expected. Like, I think they're exceeding my expectations. I think I could safely say that at this point. Four, four wins in the book and one draw. Honestly, I'm like, I don't know. I kind of had it drawn up at one point, being like, kind of expecting what, pff, expecting. Just drawing up what to expect out of the team, and I kind of did project that we were going to be three and three one and one by now. I thought maybe like Southern Utah was going to pull it off, and which they almost did. They proved to be a really good team, but not good enough to beat you and I. Hey, that final fifteen minutes, man, that those matter, and uh, Southern Utah found that out the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> But, no, but like looking at the schedule before, you know, I mean things happen. So I, I would have been happy to exit the regular season like four and four. You know, fifty fifty percent split is yeah. You know, it's not great, but hey, it's definitely not anything to like ring alarm bells. I think so. So this is this is great. We could wait. Um, do we have two or three more non conference games? Omaha, South Dakota. Oh my gosh. How could I forget about South Dakota? That was a game I forgot about. UT Martin. Yeah. Uh, next Saturday. Yeah. So not this coming Saturday, but yeah. So, I mean, we could... Um, well, if we lose to South Dakota, I will be upset. <laughs> I mean, even if we, if we lose out the rest of the regular season, I'm still not going to be disappointed. Now, I might be a little disappointed in the fact that we lose three in a row. Yeah. But at the overall record, 4-3-1, uh, that's not too bad. No. So. Especially quality wins over St. Thomas and uh, uh, Southern Utah. Because St. Thomas, they looked really good last year. Yeah. Um, well, shoot. I called them really bad earlier in earlier episodes. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a quality team. They play in a quality conference in the Summit League. I believe they play in the Summit League. I could be way off on that, but I don't know. Um, but, yeah, we play Omaha this coming Sunday. <sighs> That's going to be the toughest non-conference game we're going to be playing. I think so. Uh, we haven't won against Omaha in a few years now. and I'm sure we drew up a quality tie against them. And uh, I think Omaha made the tournament last year as well. I, can tell you. I, I think they did. I don't know. Who knows? Only the experts know. Wait, we're the experts. Gosh <laughs> darn it. We're not doing our jobs. Uh, I think we might pull off a draw. I'm thinking two two. I'd be I'd be fine with the draw. We actually have never beat them at home. Um, 
That changes this coming Sunday. So you know what? Three one. That's my no, no, no. no I, I remain so, at two two. We draw. do also according to our U N I website, we average like point eight three goals a game. So. Oh, against Omaha or yes. Okay, gotcha. So. I don't quite. I don't quite know what to predict. I'd be happy with like a one one draw. I don't think we're scoring more than two against Omaha. We do have a good team. We're scoring lots of goals this year, um, but. Omaha is a tough team. We have trouble scoring against them. So, Anything else you want to add to the lovely podcast for episode 13? <sighs> well, you and I is looking really good this year. Hopefully we can continue that. So, Oh, play Omaha. Hoping for another win. The Mavericks. I hate, it. I hate that team name. That was, that was not important at all. But anyways, I hope that everyone watching... And I truly mean this. Has a phenomenal rest of your Thursday if you're watching this on the day it releases. If not, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you guys next time for episode 14 where we interview Denise and Giselle.